I am Fir Caggiano and I am an artist. My background is actually a little bit different than the uh, standard artist, as if you'd like to say it. I actually have a formal education in marketing and advertising. <laughs> Even though like, I always wanted to be an artist since I was a kid, um, I didn't see it as a possible career for the longest time. And it was life who actually pushed me in this direction. When uh, I finished, I graduated in 2000. And at that time, my first husband, he got transferred to New York. So I had to actually drop my career, which I was doing well. I started on that industry when I was 15. And when we got to New York, I wasn't allowed to work. So I decided to actually go back to school and study what I always wanted to study, which was art. So it wasn't my first choice, even though, you know, like I always wanted to do that. So I ended up going to art school and still here. <laughs> I'll say like being creative, um, I don't have a need for anything specific. I'm the kind of person that I don't seem to run out of ideas. <laughs> I actually like, I have so many ideas that I tell people like, I need a, like an army of minions if I were to actually make it all happen. But um, what I do, I create a list of all the thoughts that come through my mind and then I try to select what is worth for me to put my time on to actually make it happen. So um, I would say like I'm inspired by life itself and um, I was a portrait painter in the beginning of my career. I moved into landscapes for a while just because it's uh, more commercial and you can make a living out of it much more easier uh, than if you were like to sell portraits. But um, recently I decided to come to understand that what truly motivates me is creating change with my art. So I've been very much focused on the philanthropic side of things. So all my recent projects have been related to helping the community somehow. So I've done, um, Help. I've supported a reforestation project in Brazil, which I still support until today. I did the empowerment series with the Like a Girl, Dare to Dream um, show at the City Gallery. And I currently have a few other ideas that I want to start working, but they're all related to, you know, somehow helping either, you know, like a cause that I truly believe in, like bring awareness to that and, you know, using the art as a voice to bring awareness and then the product that comes out of the exhibition is you know what can become you know the commercial part of the project. Um, first I'd like to talk about the motivation for the project. Here I am in Charleston, uh, a foreigner at the time, now I'm a citizen, <laughs> but yeah so I was a foreigner, a woman and I decided to go back to portrait painting just because I love it and I figured that I should paint some nudes because you know that's what you paint no people figurative you paint a nude that's you know art in its essence um, and I was told that I should have been painting that in Charleston because it's apparently a very uh, conservative area and I was like hmm you don't tell me what I can or what I can't paint. You know, it's my art. <laughs> and then I, I figured that also, if, you, if I was a guy, maybe people wouldn't have told me that I shouldn't be painting nudes or I shouldn't be doing something. And I feel like as women, we are often told what not to do. So that trigger just like really pushed me to creating something out of that. Yeah, I painted all those uh, 40 women and when I got a call from the City Gallery saying that they actually accepted my submission, uh, it took over a year for me to hear back from them, but when they called me, they say like, can you display next month? And I still had seven portraits to finish. <laughs> so it was very challenging and I got the final portrait I did on site when the exhibition actually opened, I had the portrait there and we, you know, I just decided to make a big deal of, out of it. You know, you can come to the exhibition and you can see the artists at work 
and some of the portraits were hung still wet. <laughs> so it was a very challenging show and the repercussion has been amazing. The stories that came out of this, I just like, I'm so happy that I was told not to. <laughs> <laughs> and that triggered all this project that just I think it's been a blessing <laughs> and I would go further into the niche idea would be more uh, art with purpose so even though like I'll paint I still paint landscapes and I'll do portraits because you know like I love I, I just love painting and I'll paint whatever you know like someone wants to commission me to do uh, you know the craziest thought I will do it because I love painting doesn't matter what the subject is but when I'm creating a series, when I'm creating a project, it's always based on what impact can I make with that. So I'm looking for a purpose behind my art. Well, I have a dear friend, uh, Mark, and he actually asked me to paint this portrait. He said, you know, the Imagine uh, release, um, I think it's 50th anniversary or something. Like it's a big number, right? I'm not sure, but uh, it's a big number of the Imagine album release and he said like i would love if you made a portrait of john lennon you know with your colors and all of this so that's just the beginning it's a sketch but it's going to be a colorful painting and i've always wanted to do fan art you know create a series based on people like that i truly admire and of course john lennon is a great one to kick off you know but i am considering coming out of that a full series of people that I truly admire and talking about, you know, what they stand for and not just, it's not just a portrait, it's what they represent. I have the painting with the finger, which um, it's probably not appropriate to show widely, but it is a painting that I did as a comeback for the criticism when people told me I shouldn't be doing that and shouldn't be painting nudes. And then I painted like, I just gave them the finger and it's a painting that was selected for a juried exhibition and the fact that it was accepted and selected for that show gave me the push that I needed to put the like a girl there to dream together. So I think that that's a very good iconic piece that represents a lot of, you know, the like my career because it was a shift, like a pivot moment. So I love that painting for that. Yeah, so um, being a marketing person, I always thought that I should focus on the business side of art as well. I have a lot of artist friends that don't understand that being an artist really means being a business owner, an entrepreneur, you know, like you have a brand. And I never thought that having one source of income was the solution. So having original art is something that, you know, that's where I make my profit. That's where, you know, people really pay for my time but I can't guarantee that I'll have a sale every month. You know, like sometimes, like I actually have been through the, like a drought where I didn't sell anything for five months and it was terrifying. So I decided that I wouldn't let that happen. I would always have something that is easier to sell and also something that the crowd can have. Like not everyone can afford a piece of art, but they may be happy to have something else that, you know, will still bring them joy. Uh, it, it still shares a story. So I created a, a product line and the first products that you see artists doing is prints. So people can buy prints of my work. But besides the prints, I have, you know, scarves. Those fly around Christmas. It's like, it's a great gift. Uh, and then, you know, I have mugs, I have um, bags and all sorts of things. So it's a good, yes, yeah, big product line. <laughs> Um, I yes, I would tell all young artists out there that uh, out of data, it is a fact that most artists don't make a living 100% selling original art. And that's the reason why I have my side business with products and all of this. And most artists uh, make an income out of teaching on the side or having like a day job or something like this. So I would say that focus on what you really love doing because you may, you may not even be able to use art as the main uh, income. So for that reason, it's pointless just trying to do art for the commercial side of it. So if you have a passion, if you have something you truly believe in, put all cards in that and work on what you love. 
and everything else, like I, I've learned from experience that once you figure out what you love and what you really want to share with the world, everything else kind of like seems to fall into place. You know, the supporters will come and, you know, collectors will help and because you're going to be true to yourself. So that's what matters.